It said in your bio that you were working a top 50 company in four years. It's a very short time to be very, so very successful so quickly. How does, what was the driving force there? What, what stars aligned or how did that happen so quickly? Well, I think one of the things that I learned from my time at the Naval Academy and then when I was in the military is to say yes to potential life-changing opportunities. And I think the way you do that is by doing the work that when those opportunities come, you're, you have the self-confidence that even if you haven't done it before, um, you, you take that opportunity. A couple of fundamental things um, happened for me. One was I had an opportunity when I was at Booz Allen where I met a gentleman, happened to just talk to him on a break, but he asked me a question about have, has Booz Allen ever done distance learning before? And as fate would have it, I had just been back at headquarters and had stayed there an extra day so I could get equipped on some of the new engagements that we had done. And it turns out we had just delivered the Army National Guard's distance learning program, which was the largest one ever built for any organization. And so when he you know, asked me, not only was I able to say yes, I was able to give him details on what we did and do it in a very confident way. Had I not done it with that authority, I wouldn't have learned that he was the head instructor at Top Gun. And within 12 months of that initial meeting, we were initially awarded a $5 million sole source contract to build Strike Fighter Online, which for Booz Allen turned into a $100 million program. Wow. So, so you know, as life would, would have it for me, you know, in many ways, I wish I, in retrospect, would have stayed at Booz Allen. Um, it, it was... <laughs> It was a fantastic uh, organization, but when I got the recruiting call to go to Arthur Anderson to senior manager, one step below a partner with the possibility of making partner in a couple of years, and not only that, I was being offered to take over their cybersecurity practice for the Southwest and then take the lead on their global threat and vulnerability practice. So, you know, at the time, it, it seemed like the, the logical move and for you know, three years, three and a half years I was there, it was going great uh, and, until Enron happened. When you reach that point, and I think this is something that the military also teaches you, you can sit there and feel sorry for yourself. When that, at that time, I had lost $250,000 that I paid in to, to become a partner, or you, you can take action. And that's kind of what I have always done is I've, I've taken action and I haven't sat for a little bit. You're going to sit there and you're going to feel sorry for yourself, but you got to go and pick yourself up. And I think that's something that I definitely learned from not only the military participating in division one sports, the training from the Naval Academy is, you know, when you're faced with adversity, you've got two choices, either you're going to let it impact you or you're going to overcome it and you're going to take it to the next level. And that's fortunately for me, that's, that's what happened. And I immediately uh, started at that point looking forward in the future. And I wanted more international experience. I, at that point was kind of sick of being in the, the consulting world. So I wanted to get some industry experience. And so that's what I sought out and Within a couple of months, I had landed at a company called Lendlease, working out of Sydney, Australia, and I was hired as their uh, chief security officer. 